So, this is uh, lecture 2 on module 3, which is a neural control of this uh, course on intelligent control. The topic today would be network inversion and control. So, uh, in the last class, we gave an overview of various control schemes using intelligent techniques. So, there we briefly talked about network inversion. So, we would be uh, elaborating those ideas that we talked very briefly in the last class in this class as well as in the future classes on this model uh, entitled neural control. Okay. The topics that we will be covering today network inversion in control, system identification using a feed forward network, network inversion using gradient descent, network inversion using Lyapunov function, network inversion using extended Kalman filtering. EKF stand for extended Kalman filtering, simulation results and a summary. So, what is network, network inversion in control? The, I will just first explain this concept, what is network inversion in control. You look at this uh, a generic nonlinear system, generic nonlinear system the most generic any any kind of nonlinear system can become uh, can be expressed in this form that is x k plus 1 is f of x k and u k where x k the n dimensional vector is the state vector for the system that means the physical system is defined in a state space which is n dimensional and it is a multi input system u k which is p dimensional. So, we have p input system. So, in a discrete time domain, so you can easily see this is discrete time. discrete time domain. Uh, the expression is x k plus 1 is f x k and u k, f is some unknown nonlinear function. We do not know what is that nonlinearity and we assume that this nonlinear function f can be learnt using a feed forward network that can be either MLN or RVFN. So, the usual control problem is that find u k the control law this control law here find u k. So, that the state vector uh, follows a desired trajectory. So, that is the normal uh, control problem defined for a any physical system uh, which is uh, which has a generic uh, nonlinearity. So, one of the interesting way to solve this problem is to compute the inverse that is if I compute u k equal to that is this this is my control law which is g x k x t k plus 1 uh, p. Okay. So, that is a function of x k x d k plus 1 the desired trajectory at k plus 1 x k is the present state this is the state at the next sampling instant and p represent the network parameters. Okay. So, that is this f is now 
this f is learnt by a network and that is either a multi layer network or a radial basis function network or any feed forward network. Given that scenario, we are asking a question can we find out u k which is a function of x k, x t k plus 1 and network parameters. Okay. Such that finally, this control objective is achieved. What is that control objective? That x k will follow the desired trajectory x t k. So, this is called network inversion. So, the let us look at the network. So, our this is our uh, uh, nonlinear system which we just, just discussed x k plus 1 is f x k u k and this particular system dynamical system the actual system has been modeled using a neural network which is a radial basis function network you are seeing here. Okay. Obviously, the input to the system because at kth sampling instant I know what is my state vectors and I know the input that I am actuating to the system. So, x 1 k until x 2 k until x n k similarly u 1 k until u p k. So, you can easily see the input is n plus p dimensional. input is p dimensional and output is again you can see that my output is x k plus 1 until x n k plus 1. Okay. So, this is my n dimensional output. So, you can easily see that n dimensional output is predicted by the system given the given by given uh, uh, the present state from the actual plant. So, that is why you can easily see here that we have put a hat here and a hat here meaning these are estimated by the uh, model that is radial basis function network uh, using the real time data that are being generated from the plant. Okay. So, if a plant is uh, n dimensional, uh, uh, if a plant has n dimensional st uh, states or a, a plant dynamics is defined in terms of uh, uh, a state space with n dimension, then uh, obviously, it has n states and those data are we are assuming they are readily available in real time. Okay given sequence of input data. So, we collect this data and train the network. So, obviously, I, uh, I explained to you in this network that it has uh, n plus p uh, input, n is the present states, p is number of inputs and that would actuate uh, states future state. And obviously, we expect that this future state is exactly the state that actual plant dynamics will move to from the present state. So, when I talk about radial basis function network, you can easily see uh, uh, it has input layer uh, and this is the centers we call centers and this is output layer and in the middle this is the weight, okay, weight vector for the uh, the network. So, that is what we are saying the radial basis function network has following components input nodes, radial centers, weight layer, output layer. I think we have um, we have already discussed this radial basis function network in our module on neural networks. So, the ith output of such a network can be expressed as okay, which is x i k plus 1 the state vector at k plus 1th instant is the function of v uh, and this can be written as 
j equal to 1 to l, l is number of uh, centers, l is uh, number of uh, radial centers. Okay. So, <coughs> j equal to 1 to l, theta i j is actually weight. Okay. So, theta theta i j uh, is weight. Okay. So, which I said w this is actually theta i j and phi j is the uh, the activation function in the center v is the input which is here as I said you the input to the network is n plus p dimensional that is x 1 k until x n k and again u 1 k until u p k. So, this is my input to this uh, network uh, which is uh, here uh, this is my input v and this is this w is represented by theta actually in this particular uh, network. <coughs> so, this is theta i j and phi j is the activation or the radial function radial basis function this is normally known as a basis function uh, this is the norm uh, this is normally this v minus c j norm is normally the Euclidean distance we take, but other measures also can be taken, but in all our work that we will present v minus c j and what is c j? c j is the jth radial center okay. and this radial center c j has the same dimension as that of v. So, that is why we can always compute v minus c j norm they have to have same they, they, are, they are suppose they must have the same dimension otherwise we cannot write this expression. So, v minus c j norm uh, uh, and phi j is the basis function is a function of this norm. Okay. And once we know what is the radial basis function network we have already discussed about radial basis function network earlier. Uh, I will just uh, review how we train the radial basis function network. If you look at uh, the radial basis function network, the parameters uh, in this uh, in this uh, hidden uh, unit or the, as we say radial centers, each uh, node is associated with a uh, center called C j and C j has uh, same dimension as that of the input as well as this theta the weight vector okay, theta. So, these two the weight vector theta and C i j and how many C i j's will be there L C i j because L units are here. So, the uh, we have to wait uh, we have to update these uh, uh, weights such that uh, the given input the output is properly predicted. So, there are various methods I will not discuss in details in this particular class because we have already discussed that earlier. So, you have various methods by which you can train a radial basis function network fixed centers and weight update using gradient descent that is C j are already fixed uh, weight update using gradient descent and then fixed center weight update using recursively square. Uh, you can also do gradient descent based parameter tuning for centers and weights both weights and centers can be updated using gradient descent. Uh, we can also use uh, EKF algorithm uh, uh, for parameter tuning EKF based parameter tuning for centers and weights. Uh, uh, similarly, hybrid learning. So, these are all uh, uh, means by which normally we uh, uh, estimate weights. So, normally uh, the, these, these, these methods are based on uh, least square estimates. Okay. Uh, whereas, in hybrid learning the centers are updated uh, using clustering technique and weight update using uh, recursively square. Okay. So, then this is hybrid because 
we uh, we can also say the first two also a category of hybrid because centers are already fixed but uh, normally uh, the typically the in strict sense hybrid means centers are updated using clustering technique also the way we fix the centers also it has certain meaning of clustering now remark is center update reduces number of radial uh, centers update using center update using either gradient descent or ecf uh, so if we update uh, using this gd, GD or ecf uh, the normal observation is that number of centers can be reduced drastically. So, what, what is the effect? The effect is that when number of centers in the radial Wilson's function network is, uh, is uh, are reduced, then the, the computation time involved during uh, control will be uh, significantly less. So, now the question is why in inverse net, uh, network inversion? So, we posed in the beginning the problem is that uh, what is meaning of inverse uh, the, the control uh, in, in inverse control that is uh, the u the control law is a function of uh, the present state the next desired state and the present network parameters. So, now you see the same network that uh, has modeled the plant uh, that has n states and p inputs. So, you can easily uh, see this is the network. So, if the network has learned the following dynamics that we are again and again saying that x k plus 1 is f x k u k this has already learnt f. So, can one query what is input u k for given x k plus 1 and x k. So, if I know because normally uh, control is actuated looking at the current state. So, x k is known and x k plus 1 is normally the x desired. Okay. So, given x k I want to go to x desired x k plus 1 x d uh, sorry x, x desired k plus 1. So, uh, so, given the present state and the desired k plus 1 what is input u k. So, now what I will do is that this network is given to me this particular network. So, I assign this these states uh, this response of the network to x d k plus 1. So, that means this is x d 1 k plus 1 x d n k plus 1. Okay. So, given x d k plus 1 to be the my it should be the output of the network and I know already the present x 1 k up to x n k that I my sensor has provided me this data from x 1 k to x n k. It can be sensor, it can be some observer. Okay. So, now the, the question is that if I say I know what is x 1 to x n k and I know at the output x d k plus 1. Okay. So, given the output at the target can I predict the input this is the query I am asking the answer is yes when can I predict I can predict if number of inputs are less than number of states. So, that is number of input is p and the number of output is n. So, if p is less than n the inversion is possible. Why? Because that establishes if number of outputs is more than number of inputs, then this is a case of unique mapping. But if this number is more than this, then for a given uh, desired state, given desired state and uh, a given uh, current state, we can have multiple possibilities about the input, but when this number number of inputs are less than number of outputs then for a given uh, number of current states and for the desired uh, state in the next sampling instant uh, uh, the input is unique.
So, this is called network inversion that is uh, we can predict what should be the control input given the target. So, the network inversion can be done in three ways gradient search in input space, Lyapunov function approach, extended Kalman filtering approach. So, network inversion using gradient search that we are now very familiar in this class, because we have talked about this gradient descent principle unlimited number of times in this particular course. So, I will not uh, discuss too much, but just like uh, for weight update we used gradient descent, but in this case network is already trained. Since, network is trained weights are already known, we do not have to wait, the, we do not have to update the weights. What we have to update is that given a target, given a current state and given uh, the desired state within the sampling time, within the sampling time, I have to iteratively compute the input in such a way that that input would finally result in the actual state, okay, actual desired state. The radial basis function network will have the same state as that of the desired state. So, you can easily see the my. Uh, so, this iteration is taking place in the kth sam during the kth uh, sampling instant. During kth sampling instant u t plus 1 is u t minus del uh, eta del e by del u t plus alpha u t minus alpha u t minus 1, where t is the iterative step, eta is the learning rate and alpha is momentum rate. So, the error function is really is taken as like this e is half i equal to 1 to n x i d minus x i hat whole square. So, this is instantaneous error function okay, at this is the error function computed during kth sampling instant. Then the partial derivative of the error function uh, sorry there is a mistake here. The partial derivative of error function is as usual this is uh, you can easily see 2 to cancel out x j d minus x j uh, into del uh, dou x j upon dou u i and uh, we and this can be computed from the network parameters this quantity and then we put this quantity here and we implement this algorithm. So, this is simple gradient descent all of you already know just like you updated your uh, weights using gradient descent similar way you update the input, but what we are doing we are doing iterative update of the input during a sampling instant during a sampling instant this is very important. So, uh, network inversion uh, we talked about gradient descent. Now, the second approach which is Lyapunov function approach. So, network inversion can be achieved using Lyapunov func function approach very efficiently as well. The advantage of this approach is that the convergence is guaranteed since the algorithm is derived using Lyapunov stability concept. What is Lyapunov stability? We have already taken some special course uh, sorry special lecture on this in this course on Lyapunov stability criteria. So, here the I will just remind you if we choose a Lyapunov function candidate uh, V such that the Lyapunov function is positive definite okay, and the rate derivative of the Lyapunov function which is V dot is negative definite. If these two are satisfied then the system is asymptotically stable. So, we will use this concept to derive a, uh, an algorithm for input update. The Lyapunov function candidate V is chosen to be a quadratic error function 
in desired trajectories. So, obviously, my V is x tilde transpose into x tilde uh, uh, in upon half, where x tilde is the error vector, which is the desired state vector minus uh, uh, the actual state vector at sampling instant at instant k. So, we are not uh, using k here just for the sake of clarity. Okay. We do not want to introduce another uh, index there. So, that is why k is not there. So, the time derivative of this Lyapunov function v, uh, the rate derivative which is v dot, right. this is rate derivative. So, the rate derivative is uh, you can easily see that this is minus x tilde transpose into x tilde dot or d y d t x tilde. So, that d y d t x tilde x tilde can be written as like this because x tilde is x t minus x. So, d x tilde by d t is uh, you can easily see that this is uh, minus uh, this goes 0. So, minus d x by d t and that can be written as d x by d u d u by d t right. So, minus sign is there. So, that is why you got a minus sign here. Okay. So, from here you can easily see the y minus sign has come. So, x tilde transpose and uh, we say partial derivative because x is not only function of u, it is also function of other parameters or other variables, but in the moment we are only considering u. So, x tilde transpose dou x upon dou u, u dot, u dot is same as d u upon d t this can be written as x tilde transpose j the Jacobian matrix. So, this is Jacobian matrix j u dot where j is dou x upon dou u. So, this is actually this is, is not there this is So, now we will uh, uh, we will propose a theorem and the theorem is if an arbitrary initial input activation function u naught is updated by uh, this formula which is u t dash is u naught plus 0 to t dash u dot d t where u dot is given by this expression which is x tilde norm square by upon j transpose x tilde norm square into j transpose x tilde when it is given by this formula u dot then x tilde converges to 0 under the condition that u dot exists along the convergence trajectory. You must know that our desire during training is x tilde must converge to 0. Now, we are giving a theorem by which we are saying that if I update my input to the network in this particular uh, rule, then x tilde can converge to 0, which is the desired thing. Uh, the, the proof of this theorem is very simple. You take this u dot here and take to the, uh, the previous uh, expression, this v dot is minus x, x tilde transpose j u dot and you replace this u dot by this expression here, then you get v dot equal to minus x tilde norm. So, this is a quantity which is always a positive quantity. So, v dot is always either negative or 0. It is 0 when x tilde is 0 that is fine, because when x tilde is 0 that is what is we need. So, the, the, the algorithm should stop there that is the convergence point. So, this implies v dot is always 0 for all x tilde not equal to 0 
and v dot equal to 0 only if x tilde is 0. So, this 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 proves that this theorem is right, this theorem is right. So, the once I explained what is u dot, then I write a I, I write a simple um, iterative form how to compute it. So, u t is u t minus 1 plus mu which is a small constant u dot t minus 1, where u dot t minus 1 is given by this expression. Okay. This is computed, this u dot is computed by all these expressions that were computed at the instant uh, t minus 1, okay. at the instant t minus 1, uh, at the during the iteration t minus 1, because we are updating control uh, input in kth sampling instant from some initial value. Okay. So, that finishes the second algorithm. Now, the third algorithm that we will be talking about is extended Kalman filtering based inversion algorithm. So, what is this extended Kalman filtering based inversion algorithm? Consider an RVF network that has learned the system dynamics which is x k plus 1 is f of x k u k given x k the network response x k plus 1 is a nonlinear function of u k which is x k plus 1 is g x k u k c and theta. Okay. So, so this g this is my actual plant and this is my radial basis function network. Okay. So, in that sense this g is same as f, if the, the training is proper then g is same as f, but I can write x in this particular manner and this is h u k. Since, e k is a method of estimating the state vector for nonlinear systems, this method can also be extended to estimation to estimate can also be extended uh, to estimate estimate u k given x d and x k. However, u k cannot be estimated as a whole because u k is a vector, uh, the input vectors can be decoupled u i k is estimated while all other inputs are assumed to be known. Okay. So, what we are saying is that you can easily see what is the network inversion, network inversion means given this equation because this equation represents the response of the radial basis function network, where radial basis function parameters are the center c and theta the weight, okay, the weight vector. Uh, so, the, uh, the question that we are posing is that given x k and given desired x d, okay, given desired x d. Okay, given x k and given desired x d, uh, how can we find out what is u k. So, so, to find out u k, what we will do? We will use extended common filtering and how can we do? We decouple what we wrote here is that uh, we cannot uh, you know iteratively update all the in, uh, elements in uk vector parallel uh, uh, instantaneously, but we can decouple them and by decoupling uh, we can write now the radial basis function network equation to be u i t plus 1 is u i t, because uh, uh, given uh, uh, a sampling instant. Uh, to achieve desired state vector given uh, the present state vector, the input is a constant term, input does not should not change. So, that is why u i t plus 1 is u i t and desired state that is radial basis function network output is my uh, is a function of h u t. You can easily see that we wrote here. Uh, uh, h u t 
plus zeta, this zeta is because uh, even if radial basis function network is uh, uh, trained properly, there will be some error between the actual response and desired response. So, this zeta t which is a white noise vector with covariance matrix R t is introduced there to take uh, into account of that uh, anomaly. And the question is that now you can easily see this, this set uh, this is an ideal format for which we can directly apply the extended Kalman filtering principle to compute what should be my u i t. So, to do that uh, the, the normal equation using extended Kalman filtering equation, this is the three sets of equation we get. One is the estimate of u i based on the previous estimate of the u i plus the Kalman gain k i into the innovation term. This, this particular term is called innovation or you can also say error, because this is my desired state and this is my actual state. So, this is my the target error innovation or we can also say target error okay, during update. And then the Kalman gain, this k i which is known as Kalman gain is, uh, is can be also computed in terms of this is error covariance matrix is p i hmm. and this h what, what you are seeing this h is actually uh, dou h upon dou, dou u i which is dou x upon dou u this can be directly computed from the network because given a network my input is u and this is x k, but since this x k is known the, the my output is x k plus 1. So, I can always compute dou x k plus 1 by dou u k in this given all the network parameters I can compute this, this computation is possible. And this same computation is what is H i t. So, this is what H i t huh? and uh, this is again covariance matrix P i H i t transpose plus R i t. Huh? This R i t as I said you this is the covariance term associated with the, uh, uh, the noise vector. So, this is the inverse this quantity and this covariance matrix also uh, error covariance this is normally known as error covariance matrix. Uh, so, P i is error covariance matrix. So, this error covariance matrix also can be updated using this formula P i t minus 1 is minus P i t minus 1 can into Kalman gain into uh, the the H capital H I T which is simply do X I do X I upon do U K. So, you should note that H I T can be easily obtained from the R B F network. So, from R B F network we compute what is do X Y X I upon do U K. So, the uh, this this uh, e k algorithm can further be simplified uh, using matrix inversion lemma. Uh, if we apply matrix inversion lemma, this inversion that we have written in the previous algorithm, which is H i into P i into H i transpose plus R i inverse can be written as uh, 1 upon lambda uh, into i minus P i t minus 1 h i t h i t transpose upon lambda plus P i t minus 1 h i t into h i t. What is this lambda? This r i t is actually can be written as a diagonal matrix and each element is simply lambda. Okay. So, if I take r i to be this, then this 
matrix inversion lemma can be written in this particular form. Okay. So, the, the final version of EKF algorithm for inversion is obtained as by applying this matrix inversion. So, your uh, iterative input update should be u i t is previous update plus Kalman gain into innovation term. Uh, then the Kalman gain is updated, updated by this formula, where we have no inversion. Uh, so, this is computationally very fast and uh, your error covariance matrix p i uh, can be uh, uh, can be computed using uh, this expression which is p i minus k i h i p i. So, this is lambda uh, this is uh, estimated online using the following recursion because this lambda simply represents the 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 as a measure of the difference between the actual uh, plant state and uh, the the radial basis function network uh, state. So the lambda is estimated online using the following recursion, which is very simple. You can easily see this v t is actually one upon t, or this is simply a function of t, uh, some uh, decaying function of t. Okay, this 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 quantity decays with uh, time and then lambda t is lambda t minus 1 the previous value and this is you see that this is uh, uh, the error uh, transpose into error minus n uh, minus lambda t minus 1. So, you can easily see that lambda is actually the measure of the estimate of the error square. So, now we talked about uh, the inversion. Okay. Um, after talking about inversion, now we would like to see that uh, where we apply this inversion. Okay. So, we will talk about now, we will take a system. So, this is a robot manipulator, the dynamic model. You can easily see that uh, this is a nonlinear equation, the vector equation of motion of n link rigid manipulator is of the form this, where this is my inertial matrix n by n this is my acceleration vector q double dot, uh, this is again n by 1 and this is n by n. So, this is n by n and this is n by 1. Right. Similarly, c q q dot also can be written as n by n and q dot is n by 1 and together this c q q dot into q dot is the torque arising from centrifugal and Coriolis forces. This is the gravity term G q which is n into 1 and this is our joint torque which is also n into 1. So, what is meaning of that means we have a link here you can connect that link another again another link and so on you can have as many links there. So, if we have n this each link is a rigid, then the dynamics that if I apply various torque at every joint, then how the position angular position and angular velocity of each link will change that is the dynamic here we have taken. Okay. So, if I I want to represent this uh, robot manipulator in state space, then how many state space we have? We have two n states, because uh, for n link we will have n position and n velocity, angular position and angular velocity. So, total number of states is 2 n and the control vector which is u k which is tau k the joint actuation torque this is our order n into 1 and the normally it is required that robot uh, links they should follow a desired trajectory and desired trajectory is the desired joint positions and angular positions and desired uh, joint angular velocities. So, the control objective is that 
assume that an RBF network has been trained to model the dynamic behavior of a robot manipulator. Given the desired trajectory x d k plus 1 and present state vector x k, compute the input joint torque tau k using the iterative network inversion algorithm. So, that radial basis function network output activation approximates the desired response. Okay. So, this is the inversion algorithm, we have already talked three categories of inversion algorithm. Now, how do we implement that? First, you train the RBF network. So, this RBF network models a dynamic which is x k plus 1 is a function of x k and u k. So, the radial basis function, function network has been trained to model this dynamics. So, how do we model? We take the actual data and then we model get x k from sensors, the present states from the sensor or observer, the desired uh, state positions, uh, sorry desired joint positions uh, to from trajectory planner and assign uh, the control uh, action that was actuated at k minus 1 sampling instant to uh, to u, u k, because what we are interested now that given x k given x d k plus 1, we must find out what is u k using prediction network inverse uh, uh, inversion algorithm. So, uh, when we invert we try to find out what is u k, we already know what was actuated at u k minus 1 sorry at k minus 1 sampling instant, what was actuated that that information I have already. So, I use that information, because normally uh, when we actuate any control signal, they are very smooth. So, naturally the present control actuation uh, is very near to the previous control actuation. So, start the iterative inversion t equal to 0, iterative step and my uh, I remove the k now and introduce t, because during the sampling instant k, I am iteratively finding out what should be my u such that given x k I uh, 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 and given x d I find out what should be the control input. So, so this is the my loop stats t equal to t plus 1. Now, compute the radial basis function network response x hat k plus 1 okay, giving this x k and instead of u k I give u t and this u t is in the beginning u k minus 1. Obviously, you will have some error and you uh, as long as that error is not 0, uh, what I do I update this u k uh, input vector u k uh, uh, using this inversion algorithm which is uh, either gradient search or Lyapunov function approach or extended Kalman filtering approach that we talked about earlier. We can use any of these things update the u t and go to the loop. And if this error is 0 or less than epsilon, then we stop it. That means, I have found out what is the control action that will take the present state uh, sta uh, sorry that will take the physical plant from the present state to the new state. So, we will now uh, uh, demonstrate this inversion principle uh, on a simple example. Uh, this is a simulation, uh, we, uh, we are taking a two link manipulator uh, whose dynamics is given here, you can easily see this is a very complex nonlinear system, uh, where C 2 1 is cos Q 2 minus Q 1. So, Q represents the joint position angular position and s represents uh, sin q 2 minus q 1 again q 2 q 1 they are joint position. The four parameters you can easily see a 1, a 3, a 4 uh, and again here a 2. So, these four parameters a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4 are also known, because we once we know the uh, 
uh, once given a new, uh, robot manipulator we can estimate what are the parameters okay. and then we are saying because this two link uh, manipulator. So, obviously each link should follow a specific trajectory. So, the specific trajectories are given here the first link should follow the trajectory which is a sinusoid trajectory 1.5 into 1 minus cos 3 t and the second uh, manipulator a second link of the manipulator should follow a trajectory 1 minus cos 5 t you can easily see this is even more high speed than uh, this trajectory okay the, the more the, uh, the, the the bigger the term here associated with t uh, the velocity would increase so what uh, i am now showing the result simulation result so what is this simulation result this simulation result what i am showing is that you can easily see this is called rms error in position tracking of joint one so what is uh, uh, what is our joint one this is my joint one so if i take uh, this this particular quantity if i plot it it will be something like this okay uh, of course this is cos so it should come from here uh, i can i can put it here okay this is my t equal to 0 so this is my q so my my uh, joint position should follow this trajectory so what is the rms error now i do the inversion using the inversion i compute the control input and feed that control input to the plant and see how the plant trajectory is following. So, if tram trajectory is following in some other method, so I am I am trying to find out what is the error between the actual trajectory which is given here and the plant trajectory. So, that is known as RMS error in position tracking of joint one. Okay. So, how this is computed? Now, this is simply computed half x d k minus actual x k divided by uh, sorry whole square over k equal to. So, if I am uh, um, my sampling instant is uh, the in this examples we have taken sampling instant to be 10 millisecond and uh, if uh, I am uh, uh, controlling for 3 second. So, obviously, uh, 3 divided by 10 millisecond or 30 seconds say 30 divided by uh, 3 milli uh, sorry 30 divided by 10 millisecond would be 3000. So, over 3000 iterations I am I am uh, finding out what is this uh, error square and then dividing not by 2 divided by 3000 and I take uh, square root of that term which is known as the root mean square error. So, we are computing that root mean square error for various conditions. Okay. So, you see that I have initial condition for the uh, uh, torque. So, our torque uh, that is being actuated to the joints. So, these are the initial joint torque that were actuated minus 8 8 minus 8 and uh, whatever may be the initial joint torque the uh, tracking should be perfect. So, you see that the maximum number of iteration T max we fix okay, T max we fix because uh, we cannot have as many iterations in, during a because 10 millisecond is the sampling interval. So, during the sampling interval we can have a few iterations before I can predict what should be my input. So, this is my initial input I start minus 8 and minus 8 Newton meter and uh, any arbitrary you see that these are all arbitrary values that we have taken and then uh, we try to predict what should be the u. So, based on that prediction, so u has been predicted here in 3 iteration, here in 5 iteration, here it is 10 iterations 
and correspondingly this is gradient search, Lyapunov function and extended Kanban filtering. And you can easily see that in this case uh, the RMS error the less better is the performance obviously, because x d k minus x k whole square the less is the RMS uh, square the better is the performance. So, you can easily see the extended Kanban filter is the best performance here and uh, followed by Lyapunov function and the worst was the gradient search. Similarly, we have taken many other uh, variations of uh, um, uh, sorry the, the initial conditions were varied here minus 3.2 to 4.8 0 0 4.8 to minus 3.2 8. This is the initial value that we, we initialize we start from some u and then we track. Easily see that for all cases the EKF the extended Kalman filtering has better performance and uh, the Lyapunov function is always better than a gradient search, but uh, the it is uh, uh, in in this case uh, you can easily see uh, that for for all cases extended Kalman filtering is the best. So now it is uh, RMS error in position tracking of joint uh, uh, two. Okay, so in this case uh, again we did the uh, uh, we want to. Make, simultaneously this results are all computed. Okay. So, for the same initial condition and same uh, what we, we fix the number of iterations uh, during the inversion for the 3, 5, 10 and computation you can easily see again in joint 2 you can easily see that the error uh, you can see that now the error compared in comparison to joint 1 is more why because the, the trajectory uh, desired trajectory for joint 2 is a very high speed trajectory compared to the trajectory in joint 1. So, that is why the error is more here in compared to the first uh, uh, table, but here you can easily see again E k f is much better than the uh, E k f is uh, has a better performance than uh, Lyapunov function and Lyapunov function has a uh, better performance than uh, the gradient search it seems here is the first case the Lyapunov function is not doing well, but in all other cases uh, it is doing well. So, it all depends on where is my initial condition, but uh, whatever may be the initial condition the E k f is always far superior it is independent of initial condition. Uh, so, this is very important the gradient search and uh, Lyapunov function they appear to depend on the uh, initial condition. So, this is again the RMS error in velocity tracking of the joint 1 again you can easily see the E k f uh, uh, for extended Kalman filtering the uh, the error the RMS error is the lowest as compared to gradient search and Lyapunov function. And similar results are also found out from for RMS error in velocity tracking of the joint 2. Uh, so, this was joint 1 and this is joint 2 and again the same initial condition and same uh, imposition on the same constraint imposition on the uh, maximum number of iteration that we can do for predicting the control input. So, the control input is predicted using this many number of iterations and for every case the error is tabulated and E k f is again uh, the has the best performance. So, finally, uh, in this lecture we discussed uh, how the network inversion can be used for control purpose. We talked about conditions for network inversion where I said that the number of inputs that has to be predicted has to be less than number of output states of a network. Uh, we discussed three different network inversion algorithms. They are gradient search, Lyapunov function approach as well as extended Kalman filtering. And finally, uh, doing performing uh, simulation we compared the three network inversion algorithm and we showed 
that external kernel filtering is performing better than other two which are gradient search as well as layoff function. Thank you very much.